Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Got Will here today. Let me pull up my question list. Looks like a bit of a small crowd at first. Give people time to blow in here. I think I have one pre-submitted question. Excuse me. And that person is not on. So not very many of us today so far. So if you got any questions, let me know. Oops. Okay, we do have Carrie here. So there's a Carrie <clears throat> question from Carrie. All right, Carrie, I'm gonna allow you to speak if you'd like. So you have a question about understanding like what how to how, what the repo is, how to think about it, how to use it. Yeah, so specifically, um, I'm trying to use it for the first time. Uh, okay. I've got a development server that, that you all set up for us, and I've got a repo server. So I've got a okay. development server and a repo server. Um, when I'm reading the documentation, I see that I'm supposed to like check in my changes to the repo server. So I set up my repo designer repo settings. Okay. And I, I've checked it in uh, to the repo server. Great. I don't understand the deployment instructions. I don't understand what deployment looks like, where it will gotcha. end up, how users are supposed to use the, where is production, I guess, like, what is that, yeah. So do you have, you have the ability, like your, your uh, production server, or maybe a non-prod that's not dev server, like a test or a QA, depending on what you have, but you have you access to those things? You guys only gave us a dev and a, a repo server to my knowledge, so it, I assumed that's all I was going to need. Okay, I, that sounds wrong. So bear with me just a minute here. Okay. That might be the that, that's probably the, the root of all concern confusion. Yeah, maybe that's big, the big part of the problem is, is that I didn't understand that there was a third server uh, for production. It definitely is. The question is, have we sent you the information? Let me make, let me shoot, shoot a note out really quick and I can just talk to you about it in general. Okay. What, maybe what, what would the syntax be? And maybe I just never tried to log into it. I, I would, it, it, it's probably very similar to what your, your dev server is, right? Uh, so like if you does, use D, DEV for dev, what do you think they would have used for prod? P-R-O-D. P-R-O-D. See if that actually brings up and resolves. No, it does not. Um, but um, uh, notwithstanding that, I'm gonna ping Darren, your customer success manager. I'm gonna let him have him reach out for you about the the server piece. Yeah, he's on vacation, but I I can apparently he's got a backup, so I can reach out to that person about that. But what you would do is you're, there's this other server we're talking about. So you've you've built your project in dev. You've checked that project into yes. the repo. So what mm -hmm. you then have to do is go to the production server and you want to check that project out on prod. Now, uh -huh. assuming that your project is fully like um, built, right? It has all of the dependencies uh, and there's no missing things. Then it should bring that whole project over minus like accounts um, and account and like a group account and group associations, certain things that need to be configured at the, um, at the server level, not the project level. Um, mm -hmm. it'll should, it should deploy that whole project, compile all your types and now be available for your end users to make use of on the production server. To, to do that, what you would do is let's assume in my local, on my screen share right now, I'm in production you would come into system designers repository and you would come here to check out or update project. And then oh, on this, you. go ahead, sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you, that that helps a bunch. Uh, and then I don't have one connected, but then it would connect to your repo server and it would show you a list of all of your projects in a dialogue at which point you could select it and click check out and it would then download and import that project onto the production server for you. 
question on the database integration on the, okay. the and I it's my understanding we are a little bit odd when we are trying to connect everything to a database. So in my dev server, I have it connected to our dev database. Um, and when I'm using that dev database, like gets and inserts in my flow steps, okay. I'm using like the dev database gets and inserts. Right. So when I'm, when I'm checking out and updating that project in prod, will I have to go in and re uh, replace all of those dev database steps you will not. Data. The first time you deploy, you do need to change the connection folder string itself. So if you were to look under your server under system integrations uh, databases, you'll have a number mm -hmm. of connector folders here. Yes. Right? Local connection being a default one. But if I come here and I right click this and edit database definition advanced, you'll see it's actually going to provide me the connection string. Which is which in your example is pointed towards I'm guessing your your dev database. You change the connection string, and then all of your steps reference the connection string. So you should actually, if you click on your connection folder in your local, you'll see all of the um, So I should name it just like my Azure database. I shouldn't name it dev versus UAT versus prod database in my database connection. Yeah, setup. probably. Yeah, you just want to call I it Azure Connection. It Azure. And you and you would know it's context based on what server it's 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 deployed to because the connection string itself is separate between the environments. Okay. So as long as they have the same name, you're saying it won't fuss at me. It'll still work. It's actually the folder. So like if you look here, you'll see your folder for the connection you made. Inside of that folder, you should see the queries or the the, the tables or the whatever Labels. integrations you've made. You'll see mm -hmm. them here. Now those things get the connection context by the folder that they're located in. So theoretically, this let's assume you had multiple Azure databases. Um, that you could theoretically, not that you would, you could move these tables. Let's assume that here's a table, perf test one, move between different folders. But not it's not that's not impactful to the conversation we're having here what that means okay. is that by changing the connection string at the folder i change the connection string for all of the steps that use that folder okay. so I'll, when i deploy i do need to come to that i need to find that folder i need to ensure that that folder comes with the project i then need to edit it and i need to swap the connection string to the production database um so and then that way all the steps are now pointed at the new database since I've kind of messed up already and called it our dev server, mm -hmm. if I rename it here, will it automatically update in my flows or do I have to go back and fix all of my flows? Uh, the, you can't rename it through the UI. We can give you a query. Support can help with this, uh, okay. but we could give you a query to rename it and then restart. And then that would be that that would take care of it. So no, you don't have to create a new one. Yes, you can update the name, but for whatever reason, we don't give you the ability to update it through the UI. But it's just a field okay. in the database. We can update that so that it is more meaningfully named for you. Okay. And, and, and support nice. can help with that. Okay. One last piece then. It, you've already made a huge difference for me. Thank you. Um, one Thank last you. piece. You, you go back to the repository. Um, and I'm used to using my, my main reference would be like GitHub where, you know, you kind of do a poll and a yeah. <laughs> push and commits. So um, it seems somewhat similar, but okay. I'm I'm wanting to make sure I get, is there like documentation on, you know, do I need to check out first, then check in? Like I've we should have, that. yeah, we should have some good docs on our site for in the repository section here. So I'm in repository overview. Uh, do, 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 troubleshooting, repository revisions, repository branches, um, connecting, using, it's probably here, This it's, it's probably in this using. Um, but ultimately, basically in your example, you're gonna have like, here we go, let me find a document. So this is your dev server and you're gonna check into your repo server. Now you don't have a QA, you just have a production, right? So um, you, what you do is you, you can keep you can create on the, re you could log into the repo server. So you have three decision servers here, two decision sort of workflow servers, and then a decisions repository server. You're gonna be working on version one of your application and you're gonna be checking that into the repo on some cadence, right? You're gonna get that deployable ready for prod 
at which point you're going to deploy it to prod your customers are going to confirm and then they're going to start using that project right so what you then probably but before you do that what you want to do is is go into the repo and create a branch for production so that you can work in the branch or in trunk separately and then you can keep committing from dev into trunk while, while Prada's work is running branch one. Okay, okay. And okay. then you can this swap branches on servers as sort of version 1.1 or version two comes online, something like that. Okay, and it keeps all that revision history for me just like. Yes, it does. Really yes, absolutely. Them. And that's all manageable okay. through the repository UI. So it sounds like we need to help you get access to maybe directly to the repo and to your production server. I guess so, yeah. The okay. server, well, uh, they sent me the server address. It's, it's mast.decisions.com. Oh, that's production. Okay, so essentially there wasn't a prod. It's just mast. Okay, so let me make sure I can get to that real quick. Since I'm not logged in here, I wonder if I actually have an account. Last time they set it up for our, um, the guy who signed the contract, but uh, I'm not him. <laughs> He's not really a, a an actual user. How would I get um, somebody to? Yeah, Darren. Slash, yeah, it, we could get Darren's help there to get an to get IT to create a new account for us. So that we can okay. either create an account or re reset the credentials, whatever might be appropriate. Since he's on vacation this week, can I just send an email to support? Uh, yes. In fact, if you could send an email to customer success at decisions dot com, that'll have that'll I'll, I'll ping Brian and have him. Um, All right, well, I think, in theory, you have answered my question. Thank you very much. Okay, you bet. Great. All right, so we got some questions from Vitaly. When we consume a flow as an API, is it possible to output list as an array instead of an object? I think so. I mean, uh, I think so, depending if you use raw, raw JSON as the output. Let's quickly confirm. Let me create a flow here and let me put a string list as the output here. And then I'll do constant, constant. I'll just do A, B, C, save this configure integration API. View, maybe view. There we go. And then let me, if I call this, that'll come back with what you don't want, which is object done string list. But I think if we do output type raw JSON, it'll give us the array, not at the root. Yeah. Does that give you what you need? Raw JSON doesn't use the uh, uh, outcome path name as an object in the response. Um, I'll give you the opportunity to talk if you want to, man. Uh, in repository, if you create prod.1 branch and then prod.2, then find an issue in prod2 and check out prod1 branch. Hey. Would that remove entities that were added to prod2? Hey, man. You gotta, uh, does this answer your first question? Uh, not really. So the point is uh, to remove that object and remove the name of the array and just output, like uh, start it from the uh, square brace. I don't think Which so. I don't, well, I don't think array. you can do that. Oh, okay. That you're saying that 
m m with this gone, it's valid JSON? Uh, just square braces, yes, without the an object. Uh, I don't think you can. So you're saying you want just this, right? And, uh, remove that top object. The you know. totally, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. As well. But no, you can't. You can't get it to output like this. The closest you can get is what that raw JSON looks like mm -hmm. today. Okay. And then to your question about um, prod, yes, if you hadn't checked what's if you. If you check, if you're working on prop branch two on dev and you switch back to pro to branch one, it will delete things that are not checked in. It's going to try to make the project be match exactly to the repo. Yes, oh, no, uh, the, uh, the question was, for example, I uh, work in dev, I uh, commit to trunk and then mm -hmm. let's say I release prod that one and I make exact copy of trunk and mm -hmm. make it prod that one. Then I pull that to prod, that's fine. Then I do next iteration and I release uh, prod that too. So I make a new branch from what I have in trunk. So more data and create branch branch from that and name it prod that too. And then pull, pull change branches in prod to be prod that too, which will uh, have whatever I have in trunk. Then I find an issue and I would like to roll back. If I change back to product one, will that delete data that was added? Yes, theoretically, if it's not checked into the that thing that nothing's been checked into trunk or either of the branches, and yes, you could absolutely delete data. You need to make sure you check into the working branch, even if it's trunk, before switching branches so that you don't lose anything. Like before switching, you should check in the current state into the branch you're working on and then okay. switch and then change branches. Okay. All right, that's a bit of a small crew today. So if anyone has any other questions, please let me know.
All right, I think we'll go ahead and call it a day since there's very, very few of us here. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day. And who will be back tomorrow? Dylan will be here tomorrow. Thank you.